We've been waiting a long time, and now that time has finally come. The moment we've all been waiting for. It's time for my Better Call Saul series finale episode review video. Before I get to that, though, pretty important. If you are caught up to the point where I am, if you're watching or watching Better Call Saul, or you're just not entirely sure, then you definitely need to take the initiative, especially for this episode, and pay attention to the episode's title, which, of course, I'll mention as well as put in the description for you. If that happens to be the case and you're not caught up, it would be my recommendation that you don't watch this video any further to avoid any potential spoilers. If you like Better Call Saul, Breaking Bad, El Camino, a Breaking Bad movie, and want to help me out with the YouTube algorithm, please smash that like button. It really does help out. Share this video with whomever you want or put this video on any of your social media platforms. Sound off in the comment section about what your thoughts are on this series finale. Did it live up to your expectations? What would you score the episode? Uh, whom would be your character of the episode? Now, keep in mind, I try not to give it to Jimmy slash Saul slash Gene just because I want to focus on everybody else, but he very well may be the character of this episode. I don't know yet. Uh, and also, let me know if you want to see me review all the previous episodes of Better Call Saul, because typically what I would do is do a series ranking um, a couple days after watching the finale, but I can't remember all the events that happened because I binged it and everything is like one big season to me. So if you want to see me rewatch and review all the episodes previous to Season 6, I'll probably even re-review Season 6, I will certainly do that just to keep all of you that have subscribed to the channel, uh, give you something else to watch. I do plan on doing a Top Characters video either Thursday or Friday, so be on the lookout for that. And like I mentioned in every video, uh, you're watching the video, so don't forget to hit that sub button and please stay subscribed. Uh, it really helps out the channel. Join the team, share your support, and be a part of something special. And of course, you know I'm always here for you and I always respond to all comments. So this will be Better Call Saul, Season 6, Episode 13, the series finale of the show. The title of this episode is called Saul Gone. And this will be my review, reaction, recap after just finishing watching the episode. And keep in mind, all the stuff I just said has happened before I watched the episode. Now, I will watch the episode. And I just finished watching the series finale of Better Call Saul. So let's, of course, recap what happened. We start off with Jimmy slash Saul slash Gene uh, in the desert with a couple of full duffel bags. He sees a well of water, a big well. Uh, it's a flashback to a previous episode, the one that him and Mike were in the desert. Uh, it's new footage, though. Mike Ehrman, Ehrmantraut says, uh, slow down, you're going to make yourself sick trying to drink that water so fast. And Jimmy slash Saw mentions that he wants to split the money with Mike 50-50. Unfortunately, Mike says, can't happen. That's for Lotto Sonomaka. Well, he doesn't say that specifically, but that's what it's for. And then he asked Mike, what would you do if we had a time machine? Where would you go? Mike says he would go back to 12-8-2001 and then says, no, actually, I would go back to March 17th, 1984 because he wants to celebrate St. Patrick's Day. No, he wants to go back to that day because that's the first day he took a bribe. So I'm guessing that he would no longer take that bribe on that date. And then Jimmy slash Saul says that he wants to go back to May 10th, 1965 and invest in what Warren Buffett had bought. Uh, and then uh, Jimmy Slash Saw says that he's rested and they leave the well. Then we go back to Gene as he's leaving Marion's place. Uh, Marion tells the Life Alert people uh, his vehicle info and which way he's going. Uh, Gene then goes home and grabs a track phone and his shoebox. And he has to run actually away from a helicopter that is approaching because obviously he doesn't want the helicopter to see him and then he has to hide in a dumpster as he sees cop sees a cop car in the alley that he's in and he opens up his case and he actually has the card for the best quality vacuum uh, with him and then he actually drops his diamonds while trying to open the trap phone package and then he hears hands now and banging on the dumpster and he opens the dumpster lid and four cops have their guns drawn on Gene slash Jimmy slash Saul. I'm really tired of saying all those names right now. He's then taken into custody. When he gets in jail, he calls the Cinnabon and tells the, the lady that's working there, she's going to have to call corporate 
uh, and say that they need a new manager. And then Gene slash Saul slash Jimmy is pacing in the little room that they have him in. And then he thinks of an idea and calls Bill Oakley and wants him to be his new advisory counsel. Oakley says no matter who his lawyer is, he is screwed. Saul slash Jimmy says he's going to come out on top. I'm, not gonna, I'm no longer going to refer to him as Gene because he's no longer Gene in my opinion. And then as he's on his way to the plea negotiation, we see Marie Schrader in a room as he's being walked by guards to that plea negotiation. I mentioned that Marie could have an appearance in this episode. I didn't think I don't I don't think I said she it was very likely though, but she's in it. And they want to throw the book at Saul Saul Goodman slash uh, Jimmy. And then Saul actually asks for Marie to be brought in the room. Uh, and then Marie goes on about uh, Hank was the best man she knew. If someone was in trouble, Hank Schrader would be there. She mentions Steve Gomez as well. She says Hank and Steve were good guys. She says he did it. He, she's pointing. She's talking about Saul now. He did it all for the money, helping that two-faced poisonous bastard out. And then uh, Saul slash Jimmy says the loss that she suffered is unspeakable. Uh, he says her and Hank are victims. He tells the story about his introduction to Walter White where Mayhew came in. He didn't want to give him counsel and uh, that he was kidnapped in the desert and shown an open grave by Walt and uh, Jesse. And he says that Walter White would have killed him. He mentions the fact that he had 10 men murdered in a matter of minutes in prison and says that Jesse Pingman is indeed still out there along with others. Uh, somewhere. Marie tells the lawyer not to negotiate with Saul slash Jimmy as he's saying he only needs to convince one juror of these these this these events. Which I think he actually was scared of Walt, but he wanted to make all that money too. And uh, they actually offer Saul slash Jimmy seven and a half years of time. And then Saul slash Jimmy makes some demands to get a nice cozy prison um, and uh, trying to get some ice cream out of the deal as well. And then he's going to mention the Howard Hamlin, like he has information on where Howard Hamlin is, and then he finds out that Kim actually spilled her guts about Howard Hamlin. So then we see Saul, at this point, wake up, and it's a flashback with Walter White. They're downstairs in Ed's basement at the vacuum cleaner store. Walt's trying to fix something so they can get hot water, and then Saul asked Walt what he would do if he had a time machine. Walt gets pretty annoyed by that question. Um, and then so he changes his question to, well, what regrets do you have? And then Walt, without actually saying it, mentions Gray Matter uh, as it was his company. And he kind of let himself get pushed aside and left when he could have made millions upon millions and upon millions and wouldn't be down here with him anymore if he would have done that. And then Saul says that he should have told him about it. He would have had a he would have sunk his teeth into it. And Walt says that he would be the last lawyer he would go to regarding that. Then Walt finds out that Saul has actually been this way all along. This scheming snake lawyer, somewhat. Um, and then uh, we we now we're out of the color scheme and we're back in black and white again. We see Saul slash Jimmy on a plane. Bill Oakley's there as well. And Saul slash Jimmy is convincing a U.S. Marshal on the plane to just let him talk to Oakley. He doesn't care if he listens in on it. He tells, and Oakley tells Saul about what Kim did, telling Howard's widow about what happened to Howard Hamlin. So Saul tells, uh, says that he has more to tell and wants Oakley to arrange a meeting the second they get off the plane. And then we see Kim Wexler at work, listening to her co-workers at lunch. Not really interested in the conversation. You can tell she's bored. She doesn't really like the life she has right now. And then Kim, which looks like she goes to the old, was it the, the, the spa place where where Jimmy did his, uh, his work at? I don't know if that was the case. It, if that was what rung a bell in my mind. But it's this law place that uh, she wants to volunteer at. And they're like, can you answer a phone? She's like, yeah. So she starts to answer phones there. 
And then Kim gets a call telling her, I think it was from that Erickson chick. I can't remember her name. Uh, she was in season six. I just don't remember what her name was. Uh, telling her that Saul Goodman was arrested and he's getting extradited to New Mexico. And what he's going to say affects her. So we go to the courtroom scene. Just what we wanted in this, this finale of Better Call Saul. Kim's there. Marie's there. Uh, and we find out also that Steve Gomez's wife is there as well. It's the United States versus Saul Goodman. And then the judge asks Castello about the sentence. Multiple felonies and you're only giving them seven plus years. And then Saul slash Jimmy speaks about the night he met Walter White. Same thing we heard in the plea agreement meeting. And then, surprisingly... Saul slash Jimmy starts to confess certain things. Then he's sworn under oath. He says that he gave a BS thing to get Kim there just so she would be there. And then he says that he helped Walter White. He he laundered his money. He didn't actually cook meth or be there when they cooked meth, but he helped distribute it and he made millions. Uh, he talks about uh, Chuck and how he you know did things and his brother ended up committing suicide. And then the judge, uh, he says all this stuff, which is 100% true. And it's like, wow, he told the truth. He's he's going to he's going to take repercussions for all these things that he said. So the judge says, sit down, uh, Mr. Goodman, sit down. And then he says his name is James McGill. And then we have a Chuck flashback. Chuck says that he could hire someone to do all the things that uh, Jimmy's doing. And Jimmy says he wants to do this. Uh, that was kind of the gist of it. And Chuck's got a book that he's reading called The Time Machine. So maybe that's why he asked everybody, what would you do if you had a time machine? And then we see Jimmy slash Saul on a bus to prison. One of the inmates on the bus recognizes him as Saul Goodman. And he says he's McGill. Then the inmates start singing Better Call Saul. Better call Saul. Better call Saul. Better call Saul. I thought they were going to start like a, a ride and make the bus get in an accident. And then somehow Saul slash Jimmy was going to save the day and get a reduced sentence. But that's not what happens. And then we see Saul slash Jimmy in prison. He's doing his work. And one of the guards says that his lawyer is here. And so another guy comes over and says, I'll take care of you, Saul, and do it. does his work for him. So he's, he's popular in prison. People like him because he... Got all these criminals off on stuff. And he goes into the room and it's actually Kim. Kim's there to see him and wants no cuffs. And then they light up like old times. They share a cigarette. Kim says he he could have only done seven and a half years. But now it's 86. Uh, but Saul slash Jimmy mentions. But with good behavior. Who knows. And then Kim leaves. On the way out, she sees Jimmy in the yard. Jimmy does the finger point thing at her. And uh, she leaves. And that is the end. Fair Goodbye and farewell. That is the series finale of Better Call Saul. So, they made me think this was going to be a more crazy episode than it was going to be. Kind of like how El Camino, a Breaking Bad movie was. I liked that. But it was a lot more slower than I thought. I thought it was going to be a big stage with a huge manhunt. And it was really actually a small scale. And this was too. I enjoyed it. I'm glad that Jimmy slash Saul finally took responsibility and told the truth. And, you know, is going to get punishment for all this stuff. He didn't die. He's going to spend the, the rest of his life most likely in jail. Unless he gets out really early for uh, good behavior. So, um, you know, it's it's not better than Breaking Bad. This is nowhere close to the finale of Breaking Bad. It's not, no, Breaking Bad was like a 100 out of 10. I'm going to give this episode an 8.8 out of 10. I did like the fact that Kim and Jim, Jimmy were on mostly good terms at the end. And it, it feels like they could, if somehow, some way he got out early, they somehow might be able to rekindle their romance because obviously... The guy she's with now, and I believe his name is Josh. I could be wrong on that. He's not the most exciting guy in the world. I also like the the Marie scenes in this. It was good to see Marie because we didn't see her in the El Camino movie. And we 
didn't see much of her in the finale of Breaking Bad, so it's good to see her. I was surprised that there was no Skyler or Walter Jr., but they already made a deal, so they were able to get off. There was the uh, the DEA guy was there. I can't remember his name, but he I think he was in Better Call Saul and in Breaking Bad. Oh, no, I'm sorry, not that. That's not right. I think he's already been in Better Call Saul before, but he was also in El Camino and Breaking Bad, so he made an appearance of all three of these. I'm glad that Mike had a scene at the beginning. Very brief one, but it was good to see him. I'm wish we would have saw some more Gus Spring, maybe a Lalo Saramaka or Howard Hamlin uh, cameo. We got to see Chuck, and I thought we might see Chuck, so that was good. A uh, little surprised that Tuco didn't get out of prison. Uh, just thought that would be something that we would see, but again, the, the episode was basically him in, in prison in a courtroom scene for the majority of the episode. We got the Walter White uh, scene, which we knew was going to happen, so all in all, I think 8.8 .8 out of 10, it was good. It just wasn't like the Breaking Bad finale, but I did like how everything ended. Like, he's still there. He's seems like he's well-liked in prison. People like him. And I think he's going to have, for the circumstances, a pretty good time in there. So, my character of the episode, well, I usually don't like to do this, but in this episode, I have no choice. The character in this episode is going to be Saul Goodman slash Jimmy McGill. James McGill slash Gene, whatever you, whatever name you want to call him by. What a phenomenal episode for this character to come full circle. Because honestly, the Saul character is not well liked at all, in my opinion. Like he doesn't give a shit about anybody but himself. And in this this episode, with him kind of being Saul and Jimmy, um, and a little bit of Gene, he he changed. He took responsibility for his actions, and he's going to face the repercussions of it. So. Those are my thoughts. I wish we would have got more on the run scenes, but they put him in jail right away. Uh, as expected, we didn't get anything more of Jeff. I thought that might be the case. I'm glad we got a little bit more of Marion just to throw in there for a little bit longer. So, yeah, this was this was a good series. Now, I do want to review all the episodes of Better Call Saul, like I mentioned. I, I watched, I binge watched the show and tried to retain as much information, but it seemed like I watched one giant long season and I can't remember events that happened in each season. I would say season six is probably my favorite season of Better Call Saul. Uh, I, I, I can't think of anything else that was even close to that because it had some crazy moments that, uh, I was uh, I was expecting, but not when they happened. So I would say that this is my favorite season, and I would like to review all the episodes, um, you know, from season one. I'll probably do all of them again. Uh, let me know if that's something that you want to see me do, because I can do those every Monday and maybe another day a week to kind of get caught up on that, just so I have all the episodes on the channel. Um, I would do that and maybe I'll change the review up and say what I liked, what I didn't like in my overall score. Cause that's how I used to do my reviews, but I like to recap things now, which takes forever. So yeah, that's the series finale of Better Call Saul. So I say this all the time. Uh, if you want, if you're a fan of Better Call Saul, Breaking Bad, El Camino, Breaking Bad movie, and want to help me out with the YouTube algorithm, please consider smashing that like button. Go ahead and share this video with anybody, you know, or put it on any of your social media platforms. Sound off in the comment section about what your thoughts are. Did this finale deliver for you? I think it delivered, but it wasn't as crazy as I wanted it to be. Um, what would you score the episode? Who would be your character of the episode? I can't see anybody being the character of the episode except for uh, Saul Goodman. Although Marie actually did really good in the brief time that we saw her, and I really like the emotion that she showed. Uh, let me know any thoughts that you have on this series or anything that you want me to do. Regarding this series, I will be doing a character ranking probably on Friday, ranking the main characters on this show, which there are only like 8 to 10 main characters, so I'll do that. So be on the lookout for that. And last but certainly not least, don't forget to hit that sub button. You're watching the video anyway. Granted, I know this is the end of Better Call Saul, at least the new episodes, but please stay subscribed if you're subscribed already. Join the team, show your damn support, and be a part of something special. And J-Dev... We'll return. Better call Saul.